And thank you for introducing me. So my title is very general uh, because the due date was too early. And at that time I had decided what to talk about. Now I do. So more specifically, what I'm going to talk about or the calculations here is um, about some approximation to the stable home to be groups of the sphere and its motivic analog. So I start with something basic, I think. Um, we have this notion pi n of x here. X is the base, uh, base space, and this is the n's home to be group of space X, it's defined to be, um, you look at the N sphere and you look at continuous map from this, from it to the space X and you take the home total equivalent classes and they form a group. Um, and in 1937, Friedenthal proved this theorem, this suspension theorem. And the theorem says that if you look at the sequence from pi n of x to pi n plus one of x mesh as one and continuous, continuous, then this sequence of maps will eventually stabilize. So that means um, at the end, you will get all isomorphisms. And this theorem motivates the definition of stable home to be groups. So stable home to be groups, stable home to be group of x is the direct limit of this sequence. And uh, in topological spaces, the most basic, the most basic objects are spheres. So we want to understand the stable home to be groups of the sphere. And um, this object, it turns out to be uh, pretty hard to fully understand. And describing the stable home to be groups of the sphere, it turns out, uh, well, it's been, it has been fundamental to algebraic topology for the past 90 years. And it turns out to be important. This, this thing it relate to questions in geometry. For example, um, Panchayavan's result says that you can describe provide some classes of stable frame manifolds using the stable home to be groups of the sphere. And there is also this Kvara-Milno result saying that um, the classes of exotic N sphere can be described using the thing and also the Kvara environment. And also the study of this question, computing pi star of S, it stimulated the invention of many other techniques that connect to other fields, uh, for example, chromatic home to theory. So uh, to compute this thing, we need some computational tools. And one of the most important computational tools is spectral sequences. And I will just briefly describe what the spectral sequences um, so this is from Wikipedia. Spectral sequence is a means of computing homology groups, or in our case, homotopy groups, by taking successive approximations. In a spectral sequence, you have the following data. You have a, for each n, you have En, which is a bi-graded Z module. And you have Dn, which is an anamorphism on En, and that's the differentials. And uh, how usually the computation of a spectral sequence works is the following. Okay, so, so you have, you start with E1 and D1. So E1 is a E1 page and D1 is a D1 differentials on the E1 page. And the E2 page can be obtained by taking the homology from the previous page. And now you have E2 page and then you, analyze the D2 differentials on the E2 page. And then E2 comma D2 allows you to go to the E3 page by taking homology. And then you go to E4, E5, E6, and you continue doing this until everything stabilizes and you get to the E infinity page. In the spectral sequence calculation, the E infinity page is usually close enough to what you want to compute. And yeah, so, uh, to compute the stable home to be groups of the sphere, there are two very important spectral sequences. One is called the Adam spectral sequence, and the other is called the Adams Noikov spectral sequence. Um, and the next page, I will show you some charts of these two spectral sequences, which 
uh, when I first saw them, I felt overwhelmed. <laughs> So this is the atom spectra sequence E2 page. This is a bi-graded thing, bi-graded thing module. And uh, if you zoom in, you can see lots of dots and lines. These dots there, the, the modules uh, actually here, each dot is a theme mod two, and the lines they are um, they're indicating the multiplicative relations of these dots and the color lines are different shows. So this is just to give you a sense of how the spectral sequence is like. Um, and, uh, okay. Yeah, and this is an E2 page. Um, so in spectral sequences, each a later page is a homology of the previous page. So a homology is you need to take subquotient. Therefore, when you go to later pages, you get fewer and fewer things. So this is pretty complicated, but uh, E infinity page of the atom spectra sequence is clearer. Oh. Yeah. And you can see that a lot of things, they, they disappear. And yeah, I want to say that uh, this is from, I think, 0 to 60. The S coordinates correspond to the stem or the N in pi N of S. And this is not completely known. I think the current knowledge of it is this is completely determined until uh, something like 90. Um, uh, <coughs> yeah. And by looking at the thing, maybe. Something you can immediately notice is that gap. And above that gap, you can see these very pretty regular patterns. You have an unfinished triangle and like this upside down thing appear every eight degrees. And this will also appear in, I think, later in a few slides. And this is the atom spectral sequence. And atoms not equal spectral sequence, it calculates the same thing, but it's pretty different. But since they compute atoms and atoms non equal spectral sequences, they compute the same thing. So it's natural to compare them. And this page, I put part of them and place them side by side. And I highlighted things that correspond to each other. In the atoms non equal spectral sequence, you have Oh, maybe let me first say in the atom spectra sequence, the regular patterns we just saw, they correspond to these, the, what is called the alpha family part in the atoms molecule spectra sequence, and they lay horizontally. And these are not just some random classes I pick out, they have some geometric meanings. Um, so uh, this is an observation we, we can make. Alpha family elements appears at the top of the atom spectra sequence. And the geometric meaning of these things are, this actually corresponds to the image of J homomorphism. And the image of J homomorphism, it is a map from the homotopy groups of the orthogonal group to the homotopy, stable homotopy groups of the sphere. Uh, its definition is very geometric. Its definition is very vis visible and it's easy to describe, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to say it. Um, so a way to think of this geohomorphism um, is that it, the target of this thing is home to be groups of the stable home to be groups of the sphere. So it's something complicated and something we want to understand. And the source of it, it's known. It is known by the bot periodicity. This is eight periodic. And the home topic groups is quite easy to remember if you know how to sing the song Z2, Z2, 0, Z0, 0, 0, 0, Z. <laughs> and it's eight periodic. Yeah. So the J homomorphism, you can think of it as a way to approximate the home topic groups of the sphere. And this can actually be realized by the spectrum J, meaning that if you take the home topy groups of this little J spectrum, you will get this highlighted part. You will get the image of J homomorphism. When I was writing this talk, I, I tried my best not to use the word spectrum, but it's just not possible. So for people who don't know what a spectrum 
in home topiary, what a spectrum means. They are spectra, they are the spaces in the stable setting. So just treat them as spaces. Okay. So this is a classical story, and this is well studied and well understood. And now let's look at an enhancement of this, the motivic theory. Okay, so the motivic theory is developed by Wolofsky and Morel. And uh, the motivic theory is about algebraic varieties. It has an algebra geometric roots. You can think of the motivic, the motivic stable home to be categories to be stable home to be categories for algebraic varieties. So for each base field K, you have uh, smooth schemes over K and similar here for each base field K, you have a different category and the structure in that category encodes the arithmetic information of the base field. And uh, the motivic category, it has, it has uh, application in number theory and algebraic geometry. This, it is the key to the solution of Bovosky's, uh, the Bovosky solution to the Milner conjecture and block Cato conjecture. And on the other hand, because this is a stable homotopy category, so uh, it also makes sense to talk about the homotopy groups of the sphere, the stable homotopy groups of the sphere. But now in the motivic category, they are bigraded. And this thing, it contains number theoretical meanings. For example, if you look at pi and n, um, then this is isomorphic to the nth Milner with k theory, k theory groups. So this is some connection of the motivic category, the motivic theory to number theory. And uh, it also relates to the classical stable home to be theory. So you can, for an appro appropriate base field K, you can recover information in the classical stable home to be category, but they're harder to calculate. So it's harder to calculate the spy grade, the spy grade is saying less is known. Um, if you compare that to the classical stable home to be groups of the sphere. So we just uh, talked about this classical story of approximating the stable home to be groups of the sphere using little j. And you may wonder, oh, if the same story works here. Um, so a recap of the classical story we just talk about. Uh, yeah, so we have this atom like spectral sequence and atom spectral sequence two spectral sequences and the highlighted part they correspond to each other um, and the highlighted part they are they are captured by the spectrum j so you can think of this little j spectrum as an approximation to the sphere and the pi star of j is capturing this very regular pattern in the stable home topic groups of the sphere it, motivically we can also define a, a motivic version of the little j spectrum that is worked by Bachman and hopkins and uh, well, that only happens when the base field is not of characteristic two. So for many of the base field, you can define the motivic version of J. And in work with uh, Belmont and Isaacson, and also in work with Quickly, we calculate the motivic analog, the, this bi-graded homotopy groups of J motivic J over these space fields. And yeah, we have the calculation. I mean, this is a weird way to state a theorem. <laughs> um, the calculational tool we use is something called the effective slice spectral sequence, which is, uh, which is uh, invented by Vavosky. And the effective slice spectral sequence is analogous to the adams noikov spectral sequence, so like things like in this, this picture. And we also have the Adam spectral sequence in the motivic category, the Adams analog, the motivic analog of the Adam spectral sequence. And if you compare the results, then you will see a similar correspondence between 
uh, these computational answers. So I finish, I put some charts here. Um, the larger chart is part of the effective slice spectral sequence for the little j, and the smaller chart is the motivic atom spectral sequence of the motivic sphere. So both are over, uh, I didn't say it, both are over base field R, real numbers. And um, yeah, you can see like, this, this, this appear here, 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 but there are some filtration difference. So it's not exactly the same, but um, if you look at the what groups they are, then they correspond to each other perfectly. Um, this is just part or one section in the in our computation because motivically you have this extra grading. So the bigraded the home derby groups becomes bigraded, and the spectral sequences they become trigraded. So what we are actually calculating is a three-dimensional scene, and this is just a section in it. If you go to other sections, then things can actually be pretty complicated, uh, not as simple as this, but still they capture this regular uh, pattern in sphere. So this is a, just a different section, but the larger and smaller pictures there, they, they're the same. They're from the same spectral sequences. The larger one is from the effective size spectral sequence for J and the smaller one is for the sphere. And you can see that it's capturing the top of the motivic atom spectral sequence and discard the rest of things. Uh, yeah, so this parallels nicely to the classical case. Okay, I think I'll stop here. We have time for one or two quick questions. So, what is the sphere in this motivic sense? What is, what is the sphere? What is the sphere in the motivic sense? Uh, the spec in the stable case, it's spec K, and then you do the suspension construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would it be possible to say a few words about uh, in the motivic uh, setting? You had the bigraded pi as opposed to the classical setting, which is like. Uh, single grading. So, would it be possible to say a few words about like where the two gradings are coming from? Yeah, so, um, sorry, your question is about why we have two gradings. Yes. Uh, yeah, so the first, um, oh, okay. If you think about, <clears throat> if you think about C, the complex plane, and you remove the middle point. <laughs> And oversee that alpha line minus the middle point. And that's home topic to a sphere, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in the motivic category, some algebra geometric circle. And we also have the normal circle, the, the simplicial circle. Yeah, and that's why you have two gradings. Excellent. And when I get 